Today we're looking at Albariño, the refreshing, salty, white grape grown in Spain and Portugal. So what the heck am I doing with a 10-year-old wine? Hi, I'm Master of Wine Christine Marsilio and Head Wine Educator for Wine Folly. Today we're going to learn about Spain and Portugal's premier white grape variety, Albariño. Albariño is a white grape that produces refreshing, zesty, light-bodied white wines that are normally meant to be drunk young. And it's grown in the northwest corner of the Iberian Peninsula. So how can such a refreshing white wine be made in one of Europe's warmest regions? Well, it turns out that the rain in Spain doesn't fall mainly on the plain, thanks to its proximity right next to the Atlantic Ocean. This area of the Iberian Peninsula gets over 1,700 millimeters of rain each year. That's 67 inches. That's almost double of what Bordeaux gets. And with all that rain, this is the most lush and verdant part of Spain and Portugal. Thankfully, Albariño has thick skins, which makes it resistant to the humid and wet weather. Those thick skins also give a grippy texture to some of these wines, making it perfect for pairing with food. So where exactly is Albariño grown in this wet, cool northwest corner? In Spain, the main region is Rias Baixas. With its granite and schist soils, you'll find fuller-bodied mineral wines with razor-sharp acidity. This wine has that acid, and that's one of the reasons it can age so well. In Portugal, Albariño is known as Alvarinho, and it's grown in Vinho Verde. It's often blended with other local grapes creating a spritzy, light-bodied, lower alcohol style. But there are some fuller-bodied single varietal examples too. Today, I've got two different wines to help us discover more about Albariño. Our first wine is a single varietal Albariño from the Wine Society from the Vino Verde region in Portugal. You can see on the bottle it's 12.5%. And if we check out the back, we can see it's from the Monsao and Melgaço region, which is located along the Minho River. It's one of the best subregions in Vinho Verde. This should be a refreshing, zesty, salty style of Alvarinho, and it should taste pretty good because of that really excellent subregion. Let's give it a try. Vinho Verde means green wine in Portuguese, but the color here is pale lemon. Let's give it a smell. As suspected, we've got fresh floral notes of jasmine, almond blossom, wet stones, but there's no oak and there's no aging aromas, as you might suspect from a youthful, refreshing wine. Let's give it a taste. Yep, there's a lot of freshness and acidity there. Thanks to the cool, wet climate, this grape holds on to that re really refreshing acidity. It's also bone dry, but we do get some of that grippy texture from those thick skins. Our next wine is an Albariño from Rio Spicius in Spain. This one is Pazzo Senoran's Albarino Vintage 2012, 10 years old. I thought that Albarino was meant to be drunk young and fresh. So what's going on here? This says it was bottled in April, 2021. So what was it doing for the nine years in between harvest and bottling? Well, it seems to have spent three of those years aging on its lees. This one says 36 months sobre lies, or sur lis. That's gonna give us a creamy texture and a bready, doughy aroma as well. For the rest of the time, this wine spent aging in stainless steel tanks. So because of that age, we're probably gonna find honey, wax, and maybe even kerosene. Let's see if we're right. Wow, look at that color. That has changed from lemon to gold over time because of the slow oxidation in bottle. Let's give it a smell. Wow, all those kind of vibrant, fresh aromas, those floral notes from the young wine have now really taken a step back and we've got a lot of aging characteristics. So honey, wax, candle wax, nuts as well, like hazelnut. And we also have this really subtle kind of biscuit or doughy aroma coming through that has to be from that three years on the lees. And there's a real, kind of saline character as well. That's probably coming from the proximity to the ocean where these grapes were grown. 
It kind of smells like really good old Chablis, and I really like that. Let's give it a taste. Wow. Just like the Vino Verde, this has loads of acidity. It's like razor sharp, but we, we also have this kind of creamy, oily texture that's almost certainly coming from that Lee's aging. And then we have really intense uh, aromas of wax and honey coming through from that bottle age too. And the finish just goes on and on. Um, this is a really, really fantastic wine. So where else can you find Albarino grown? Well, outside of Spain and Portugal, there aren't really many places. You might be able to find a few rare examples in Australia or California, but that's pretty rare. So what does good Albarino cost? Well, this fantastic aged Albarino, which is pretty rare, costs around $60. But if we're looking at a more refreshing, youthful style, such as the Vino Verde here, we're looking at more like 10 to $15. Albarino tends to grow next to the sea, and therefore it works really well with many seafood dishes. And thanks to that razor sharp high levels of acidity, it's going to cut through a lot of kind of salty, creamy dishes too. I would suggest pairing with mussels in a cream sauce with french fries because the acid in these wines will really cut through any fat that's there. If you want to learn more about Albarino, check out the link below. And if you want more awesome video content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Cheers!